Hi, and welcome to my guide. Today, we will be completing the recipe for disaster quest. The only thing that we will now need to do is six boss fights. The quest requirements are Desert Treasure, Horror from the Deep, all the other RFD subquests, as well as 175 or more quest points. There are no stat requirements. I also don't think you absolutely need any items to do this, but there are quite a lot of recommended or very helpful things. For example, your best available wind, water, earth and fire spells for the Dagonoth Mother lookalike boss fight. A pair of ice gloves from the hero's quest would be nice to reduce taken damage as well as prevent your weapon from being unequipped. About 4 regular restore potions for the Camel lookalike from the desert treasure quest. Maybe some snares if you're gonna be using magic to kill Flambeat, but if you can use the height armor and you have like base 70 stats, then melee should also be no problem. Then also some good melee or ranged armor and weapon, depending on which one you are the best at. As well as some good healing food, preferably healing at least 16 and higher. And for the Dagonoth fight, what also may be helpful is some ranged defensive armor, for example rune or uh, just some melee gear. For teleports, nothing, everything will be done here in Lumbridge. So before we're gonna start the first boss fight, first I'm gonna tell you about the boss room itself. Once you reach the boss room, you will need to defeat six bosses in a 1v1 fight. The boss room is instant, and as of the making of this video, this means that you cannot reclaim your lost items on death. Also, in each direction of the room, there are some white portals taking you back to Lumbridge. You can use these after every boss fight to restock and prepare for the next fight, and you will not lose any progress when leaving. And a minor note is that you cannot use any prayers inside of that boss room. That's it, the timestamps and all the info will be in the description. So, for boss fight number one, that will be against Agric Nana. This boss isn't really too difficult, it is just a starter. This boss will only use melee when you are up close, and it will use magic when you are afar. And his max hit is 16. The boss, on the other hand, has no weaknesses, but it has some decent magical attack and defense, meaning that magic doesn't really work too well on it. So just simply use your best DPS, excluding magic. Besides from that, you should be fine. I'm gonna quickly drink my superset here in the bank, then deposit them to grab some extra food. And let's go upstairs, let's go to the dining room and go through the portal. After you defeated Aglith Nana, go through any of the white portals in each direction of the room to return to Lumbridge and prepare for the second boss fight. Did I forget my DDS? Yeah, it doesn't use magic at all. No need to bring the pen and skirt. It is just a melee fight. Max hit of 16, so yeah, pretty easy.
Right, once you've defeated Agrith Nana, let's go through the portal and let's go to the bank to prepare for the second boss fight. This will be against Flambreed or Frambreed. What? Flambeed? This guy is a little bit more difficult. He will use magic and melee with a max hit of 22. If you have access to ice gloves, be sure to equip these to be able to consistently have a weapon equipped and also take less damage from its magic attack or melee attack. I think it's melee. The boss is weak against crush and magic attacks and especially against water spells. So that is also what I will be using. I will be using a water wave, which is my best one available at the moment. And to be able to avoid its melee attack, I'll be using Snaz to temporarily immobilize it, then cast two water wave spells or two water spells, and then snare it again. Similar to my desert treasure guide, how I defeated Farid at a combat 37. By the way, if your melee stats are like base 70 or above, simply wear some D height and a whip and bring some good food and you should be fine. Alright, once you have defeated Flam Beat, let's get out of here before Caramel will start freezing us. Right, for this fight, this will be a little bit more annoying because she is a female version of Camille from the Desert Treasure Quest, but is slightly weaker in my opinion. This boss will drain your stats three levels at a time, so be sure to bring like three or four regular restore potions. If the fire spell you're going to be using to kill it is close to your current magic level, be sure to bring enough restore potions because she will drain your stats quite often. For her attacks, she hits a fast hitting and very accurate magic attack with a max hit of 7 and also uses a very inaccurate melee attack with a max hit of 22. So I suggest you once you go inside of the boss room, immediately run next to Caramel and stand there while you're using fire spells to kill her. Because if you're not standing next to her, she will not be able to use her melee attacks, meaning that she will constantly hit you with sevens. And for the attack, simply use some fire spells and that is about it. Thank you. 
Is this just me or are the boss fights a lot easier? I don't really want to jinx it though because the Diagonal Mother is fucking difficult. Alright, once you've defeated Karma, let's get out of here, because there is the Zoot. He isn't really too difficult in my opinion, but he has some uh, strong melees. So, for the Zoot, you don't really have to bank, to be honest, but, but I would prefer to bank, so everything stays consistent. Right, for the zoo, he uses simply a faster but slightly inaccurate melee attacks with a max hit of 19. He doesn't really have a specific weakness, so simply use your best DPS method to kill it as fast as possible, excluding slash and crush. So stab, ranged and any kind of magic is fine. Now when you need to heal, I would suggest you to run away from him while healing, so you can heal like multiple times, so he will stop attacking you for a little bit. Right, let's get moving. So that is basically it. Uh, use your best DPS to kill it. And just use anything besides slash or crush. That's basically it to be honest. Alright, once you've defeated the Zurt, let's quickly get out of here because the Dagon of Mother will spawn and that is the most difficult fight out of these six. So let's go to the bank and this uh, requirements will be slightly longer. So the Dagon of Mother uses a melee attack with a max hit of 20 and also uses a range attack with a max hit of 20 but she will always hit it twice so the max hit is basically 40. The Dagon of Mother however is very weak to magic so I would suggest you to equip some magic attack bonus gear combined with some ranged defensive gear. If you have a round plus 20 attack bonus that should definitely be good enough. Be sure to bring along your best wind, water, earth and fire spells and you could also bring along your ranged and melee as well. You will need to see for yourself what would be better bringing some extra food or bringing some extra switches. Also you could walk underneath Dagnath the Mother and then just dance with it to try to avoid some of its attacks if you haven't brought a weapon for a certain phase. Alright, this boss fight is pretty uh, scary, so I'm definitely also going to be potting again because I don't want to die. Definitely not. Everything will help, I guess, to get done with this. Not really sure if I should autocast, but whatever. Right, once you're done, let's get up there. 
You have completed the Horror from the Deep quest, so you have already fought the Dagonoth Mother. Just remember that orange is melee and green is ranged, and then you should be fine. Right, let's get started. Few tricks, my ass. This is your last one. I'm misclicking. Dude, I'm Tonk? What the hell? How awesome is this? Do we need more magic accuracy then? Dude, why am I so tonk? 158 range defense, and I haven't been hit once. What? Dude, I'm not even wearing my granite shield and it doesn't hit anything. Why? Last time I got owned like crazy. Right, it has already been defeated, I guess. Oh, wait. Two more hits or so. There we go. Ah, bitch. Right, once you have defeated the Dagonoth uh, Gelatin Mother, you're basically done here. Now the only thing you need to defeat is a Colonomancer, and he's the easiest one of the bunch. Come on, dude, one hit. There we go. So, for the Colonomancer, he's the easiest one of the bunch. He simply uses melee and magic with a max hit of 25, but in my opinion, that is rather inaccurate. Also, this guy is basically weak to everything. Be sure to keep one empty inventory slot, because it's pretty possible that you will not be using any food in this fight. Yeah, that's about it. Your best DPS of any combat style. If you're using magic, then it might be dangerous for you, because he uses magic and melee. But if you're using melee, you should have absolutely no issue, I think. Simply stand next to him, so he uses his melee definitely. And yeah, that's about it. And once you've defeated the Kalinoromancer, you have completed recipe for Disaster Quest. You are awarded with one quest point, an experience lamp that grants 20,000 experience in any skill that is above level 50, as well as full access to the Kalinoromancer's chest.
because now you have access to the complete stock, which is then 50 and everything except for the grapes. And the reason why everyone completed this quest, or 10 quests even, is to be able to buy and equip Barrow's Gloves for 130,000 coins. Alright, this was my quick guide how to complete the six boss fights of the recipe for this awesome quest. Hopefully it has helped. Subscribe, rate and comment. Okay, thanks, bye.